Hello, friends. Welcome to the Lug Life Podcast. My name is Adam. My name is Sherry. Sherry Beth, what episode is this? Number 50. Five this, zero. This is a big one. This is a milestone. Yeah. 50 episodes. When we started this a year ago, January mm-hmm. 2021, did you think we'd make it to 50 or did you think we'd give up long before this? <laughs> uh... Well, I mean, I kind of figured we'd give it up. Oh, me too. 100%. Because of our track record. <laughs> 100%. But I am really proud of us for sticking with it. I am too. Uh, this is going to be a different episode than we've done before. Yep. So yesterday over on our Leg Life YouTube channel, mm-hmm. we did an Alaska this or that video. Yep. Except we realized that there are a lot of stories that kind of came out of some of our answers that YouTube just doesn't give you the ability to to really like expand on. Right, I mean, you can, but it just makes for a really long video. So we decided to kind of do uh, a bit of a package deal. Yep. So if you're listening to this podcast and you have not listened, or if you've not watched our YouTube video, um, go check that out. Go over to the Leg Life YouTube page, search Alaska This or That, and uh, check out that video, and then come back and listen to the podcast. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay, so we have 20 questions that we went through and kind of put together. Yes. And these are iconic Alaska things, famous Alaska things, some of our favorite Alaska things. Yep. And as we said on YouTube, um, these answers, this isn't like a, I like this and I hate this. Right. These are all good things and we had a really hard time choosing between them, um, but we made ourselves choose yeah. between them. Completely. <laughs> and some of the answers were not but we're not easy. Right. But also there are some really great stories and that's what we're going to share in today's podcast. Kind of Mm -hmm. the stories behind our Alaska, this or that. Yep. Um, So the first question we said was mountains or glaciers. And you said, Uh, (laughs) I said mountains and I said mountains as well. Yes. Now here's, I, I have a hard, I had a hard time answering this one because, Mm -hmm. um, well, because literally my Enneagram 5 brain says, but glaciers are in the mountains. Nope. And so you didn't let me choose that. But um, but also, like, there is just something so amazing about glaciers. Yeah. And we've gone on the glacier cruises and we've, you know, climbed on glaciers and um, they're uh, amazing. Um. And so it was it was really hard for me to choose mountains, but I did. I chose mountains because, um, and I said this in the video, but it's because I love mountains and I never get tired of looking at the mountains. We see them every day. Every day outside of our living room window. But I will say, uh, kind of touching on what you said, when you are on a boat near the face of a tidewater glacier mm-hmm. and you hear that thing. So when a glacier calves, what calving means is that part of the glacier falls off into the water or just kind of falls off. Mm -hmm. Um, It makes a thunder. And that's the only way I know how to describe it. Yep. That just fills where you are. It's this unbelievable loud cracking noise. Um, And then, you know, the water, the waves, just everything from the glacier falling into the water is just Mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So... That was, uh, we both answered mountains on that one for the same reason. Yes, uh, but I do have a story about this. Oh, you do? And this is why it was so hard, I think, to to choose. I didn't know there was a story on this. There is a story Let's on this. Let's hear it. So last summer, we, where were we? I forget even where we went. But we went right up to the face of a glacier. And it was, it, it, like, it's huge. It's stories and stories and stories tall. And a big chunk of it fell off over there. Like, it was just, it was so cool. And, like, that whole experience was amazing. Oh. Was it this last summer or the summer before? It, I don't know. I think it was the summer before. Maybe it was the summer before. I think so. Yep. So, the next question, Iron Dog or Iditarod? We both said Iditarod. Yes. Um, question after that, salmon or halibut? I said halibut because I don't like salmon. I said salmon because of how versatile it is. Yeah. Um, just, you know, questions that we might not have, like stories. We're just kind of skipping over telling you what we said. Yep. Uh, Claudia or Steam Dot. I said Steam Dot. I said Claudia. Wrongly. Um, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. And this next one, though, we got a great story with this one. This is Midnight Sun or Northern Lights. Yeah. So we both said Northern Lights. Yes. Um, be, nah, I mean, the Midnight Sun is unbelievable and amazing. The Midnight Sun is a really unique thing um, that people on, like, this latitude get to see. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, 
uh, there's something about the Northern Lights. And we have a story to tell about one of our experiences getting caught in the Northern Lights. So we were driving down to, I think we were driving to the town of Soldatna, which is south of Anchorage. And I don't even know why we were down there. And driving back, we were going through this mountain pass. A lot of the drive is through um, is through a lot of mountain passes. And we're going through this one mountain pass and kind of came over this hump and just the entire sky is filled with northern lights mm -hmm. and they are just absolutely dancing and moving yep and it was the kind of thing it was like oh my god we've got to find like the next like pull out yep it, like, which alaska does a really good job of having um fairly frequently is like these little pull outs for cars to get off of the road and yep. park and so you can look at the scenery or look at the sky so we get out and it is it is pitch black uh, you're in a mountain pass, so there's no light pollution, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is it is the moon and the northern lights, and that's kind of all of the light that's around. Yep. And we're just kind of standing out there looking up in, I mean, in awe, honestly. It, yeah, it was amazing. It was hands down the best northern lights experience that I've ever had. It was unbelievable. And you're up in a mountain pass, so it feels like you, they're right above you. It feels like you can touch them. Yeah. And we're out there, we're outside of the vehicle, standing there looking up. And all of a sudden, because remember, we kind of pulled off on this little <laughs> roadside pull-off. Mm -hmm. We hear, and the only way I know how to describe it <laughs> is imagine if there were claws walking across asphalt. Yep. Like a bear that had like big claws that you could kind of like, and I don't know if it's going to pick up the microphone, but like... Like it <laughs> sounded like claws on pavement. It sure did. And But it's pitch black and we can't see anything. Right. And so Sherry and I looked at each other and you could tell we both heard it and knew that that wasn't good. <laughs> and so we like darted back to the vehicle. Right. Now we weren't far, far away from the vehicle. No. We were 10 or 15 feet from our, our car. Um, but we like booked it back and got in that car real quick. Oh my gosh. So fast. And we drove away. We never did see. No anything but boy we both heard it and, and we were both like oh no now granted because <laughs> of the highway it totally could have been like a porcupine porcupine's gonna have like kind of long nail you know what i mean like that that's what yeah, I mean, in my or, mind I mean, it could have been like a rock falling down the mountain or you know it could have totally. been like whatever but like it was that sort of a noise that we both heard and we were both like oh no so we had to cut our amazing oh. northern lights experience short because we didn't want to die i i could have stood there <laughs> I mean, I could have stood there forever and just yeah. watched that. It was amazing. In fact, it was one of those experiences that was like, oh, I wish that we had been vlogging or I wish it was in, the, you know, because this was a long time ago, like before even so, cell phone cameras were good. This is before iPhones, I think. I think it's before iPhones were even a thing. I could have taken a photo on my Blackberry. Probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our that's our Northern Light story. Uh, yep. We've seen them a lot, but only a few times where it's truly like breathtaking. Yep. Um, the next question uh, was humpback whales or orca whales. We <laughs> love both of these. Yes, we decided we both chose humpback um, because of a specific experience, but we also decided that orcas are prettier. Yeah, orcas are, are without a doubt a prettier animal. Yeah. I mean, just like the black and white, they're just they're yep. beautiful. Yep. Humpbacks uh, are kind of funny looking. So we have a couple. Um, <laughs> We have a couple sort of stories with this. Mm -hmm. uh, you've heard, well, actually, you've seen both of them on videos, yes. on vlogs. Uh, the humpback whale story was from this last year when we saw the mom and the baby. It was... <sighs> Unparalleled. It really was. It was just, it was phenomenal. It was the moment I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see that, that close in that location was, it was just unbelievable. Yep. And then the previous summer, we were out on a glacier cruise or mm -hmm. one of the Kenai Fjords cruises, and we sort of got right in the middle of this pod of orcas. There were probably 30 of them. It, it was unbelievable. And it was, that was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced, too. The boat cuts its engine, and so it's just silent, and the only thing you hear is, like, them when they get to the water to breathe, to the top of the water to breathe. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yep. It was so cool. And there were so many of them. And it felt like, it almost felt like they were like following us because it wasn't like, oh, that was cool. A couple seconds. Like it felt like we were with them for minutes. We were with them for a long time. Yeah. Oh, they were, gosh. they kind of just hung out around the boat for a long time. A lot of the cruises out of, um, out of Seward, the whale cruises, the glacier cruises, you do see, cause there are a couple resident pods of orcas. There's a couple transient pods of orcas. So you see them, uh, often I would say. Um, but this was without a doubt the most 
intense and memorable experience. Yes, for sure. We had ever seen. And it was interesting because that actually happened on a cruise. It was when Auburn was visiting her first summer. Yeah. And we had kind of had a bit of a bust of a day. Like the weather wasn't great. We, I was super sick. You weren't feeling great. There <laughs> was I just, didn't have my cool medicine yet. We hadn't seen a lot of things. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we have this unbelievable experience in a gigantic pot of orcas. Yeah. And it, it was crazy because that kind of redeemed the entire day. It did, yep. For it was sure. spectacular. So cool. Uh, the next question, Seward or Homer? We both said Seward. We both said Seward because of proximity. It's yeah. two hours. Um, we can go down for the day and come back and sleep in our own bed. Homer is four to five hours, depending on traffic. Yep. Um, so harder to do in one day. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of driving if you want to go there and turn around and come back. Um, but I think Homer is prettier. Yeah, you like Homer's natural beauty more than Seward's. Yep. Okay. Seward is also beautiful. It's a beautiful little town. Uh, backs right up into mountains and it's got the resurrection bay right there um, it's beautiful but i just think homer something about homer i think homer. my favorite story of either of those at least for me is actually from seward uh there was a little it wasn't even a bed and breakfast it was like a vacation rental uh mm -hmm. called i don't even know if it's still around it's called the alaska paddle inn mm -hmm. and it was a top and bottom duplex you could rent it upstairs or downstairs and we went down there for just like a little weekend getaway and we rented the upstairs mm-hmm and it was, it was beautiful. It was amazing. Basically right on the water. Yep. And I'll never forget that we were like making breakfast in the morning. We're making waffles because they provided all the stuff to make it. <laughs> yep. And you're making waffles, looking out the window, watching sea otters swimming mm -hmm. in the water. And it was just the craziest thing to be like, how is this real? Right. Yeah. We rented that place a couple of times. It was one of our favorite yep. places. Um, and, and again, just to be able to you know, have a super relaxing place in a cute little town, wake up, make waffles while you're watching sea otters just like <laughs> swimming around. It was so cool. It was so cool. It was cool. amazing. That's yep. definitely one of my favorites. I agree. Um, the next question was Palmer or Wasilla. We both said Palmer. Um, we both said Palmer. Palmer to me is just, it has like that cute little main street. It's just got like a Hallmark vibe. Um, and Wasilla is just a lot more like spread out. Yep. Now, if I had to choose people in Palmer versus people in Wasilla, some of our very favorite people ever live in Wasilla. So, um, but yeah, I I just love the little town of Palmer. Yeah, me too. Next question was Alaska Airlines or any other airlines. <laughs> uh, we chose Alaska. We're super loyal to Alaska. Yep. Uh, question after that, whale watching or flight scene? Yeah. And did we both say whale watching? I for sure said it. I don't remember what you said. Uh, I don't remember. Um... The story I have is actually around, because we told a whale watching story already, a couple mm -hmm. of them. Um, my story of flight scene this past summer with my friend John, it was past maybe even spring it was. Mm -hmm. um, it's so surreal to experience Alaska by air that way. Because Alaska is so vast and it's so big. And it seems like everything in Alaska is big. The mountains are big. The valleys are big. The glaciers are big. The... Just like the animals are big, <laughs> like everything is big. Uh -huh. Yet here you are in a small plane, and there's something about being small in a big setting that is just—I don't even know. It's just such an amazing experience. And I remember, uh, so John and I left Merrill Field here in Anchorage in in his plane, and we flew to like Kinnick Glacier, flew over Kinnick Glacier a couple times, got to get close to the glacier. It was amazing. And then we kind of flew up this mountain pass and over the mountains down to the town of Girdwood. And to get to Girdwood from Kinnick Glacier, you kind of, you have to climb because you got to clear these mountains. And there's this one point where we're flying and I'm looking to my left and there's mountain peaks. And I'm looking to my right and there's mountain peaks. And you just, it's just so awe-inspiring. Like I, we're, I don't have words to describe what that's like to be so small in such a big landscape. <laughs> um, the other thing about like flying in Alaska, this is kind of a side story I'll say, is when you live here, you know a lot of pilots. Mm -hmm. It's just true. Like we have so many friends that are pilots. Yep. Um, and one of the things that's I think unique about being here is that whenever you hear about a plane accident, a small plane that goes down, a charter plane that goes down, we all 
like our our hearts kind of stop for a minute because we all know so many pilots. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing that's like, uh, oh my God, a plane went down here. That's kind of where so-and-so flies. Like, just send some text messages. Yep. You know, you just kind of start checking. <laughs> <You're all right? laughs> yeah, you just kind of like start checking on your friends mm -hmm. um, because, you know, so many of our friends have planes and are pilots and are not flying. And I just don't know of another place where that's true. Right. You know, when you hear about plane accidents, it's like, oh my God, I wonder, I want to make sure it's not somebody that I knew. Right. So, yeah. that's my... My Alaska flight scene story. Yeah. Uh, the next one, moose or bears? Moose. Both, yep. yep. Both moose. Basically for the same reason. Um, yeah, just more accessible. Like, they're just kind of everywhere. We see them all over the darn place, outside <laughs> our front door. Um, in fact, it's about the time of the year. So, mm -hmm. confession, you guys. We still have our we still have our Halloween pumpkins outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're still outside. But we haven't, like, moved them yet to a place where moose could easily get them. Yeah. And so we, we about need to do that. We need to move them because there's like lots of moose tracks outside. Yeah. So they're around. So it's about the time of year when we move our pumpkins <laughs> so the moose can have <laughs> a little snack. A little snacky. <laughs> yep. Sherry, what's the next question? Parks Highway or Richardson Highway? Man. So we both said Richardson. Yep. Um, and again, kind of the same reasons. Yeah. And um, if you have not seen the video yet, the Parks Highway and the Richardson Highway both go to and from Fairbanks. They kind of make it like a loop between Anchorage and Fairbanks. Yeah. Um, the Parks Highway is a little bit faster. It's a little more settled. There's there's lodges. There's stores. There's things to do um, along the way. The Richardson is much more untouched. Mm -hmm. It's much less taken care of. The road is a little bit rougher. Um, but it's and it's a little bit longer. But it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, and that's the thing is like both of them are stunning, right? For, yes. For Mo and that's I was thinking about this when we were recording the There's video. There's not an ugly drive. Well, like if you were from any other state, like the Parks Highway might be the most beautiful drive you've ever done in your life. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Until you do the Richardson. Until you do the Richardson. <laughs> um, right. And so I, I do. I love both of them. One thing that I really love on the Richardson, though, do you remember driving back in the RV when Auburn was up here? Mm-hmm. We stopped at that drive-in and ate burgers. Yeah. Those burgers. They were really good. They were so good. They were really good. Yeah. Was that in Delta Junction? It was in Delta Junction. Yeah. I want to go back there this next summer because I remember being like, this place is delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. So that's the Parks Richardson Highway. Next question. Anchorage Museum or Museum of the North in Fairbanks. We were divided on this. Yeah. I said Museum of the North. There's not a wrong answer. No, they're, they're both, both amazing, amazing. Totally. museums. Um, I, I just like the Museum of the North a little bit more. Yeah, I like the Anchorage Museum. Um, there's currently an exhibit in the Anchorage Museum, and I don't know, I'm not sure if I've told you about this, that I want to go to. So I'd like to, here in the next month, I'd like to go. Mm -hmm. It's called, I think, Lies, Lies, Lies. And it's a traveling <laughs> exhibit. And basically what it does is it talks about the impact on society that hearing like the constant lies that we get through media oh, and so they built a room where the ceiling all of the walls and the floor are all screens and you step in it and i think it's like every i don't know 30 seconds or every minute you're shown forty thousand lies and there's an <laughs> audio plane that is just different lies that you hear in like wow in media that's crazy. And I just feel like that's so impactful. That's a trip. And I remember, like, that's one of the things I love the Anchorage Museum does. I remember going to a, a exhibit in the Anchorage Museum about homelessness. Mm -hmm. And the first room you walked into, all of the walls were collected signs from our neighbors experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, it was almost like this punch in the chest. We went to that with our nephews. Hmm. And I remember... Um, our younger nephew, Tobin, I, I think, I want to say that he was seven or eight at the time and it really impacted him. Interesting. And I remember him and I, he still talks about wanting to help, um, our homeless neighbors and that kind of stuff. Like I he's, think this, he's still into that. I think this was a different exhibit. I'm not remembering that one. Cause this is one that went to when Auburn was here. Oh, this was just two summers ago. Oh. Okay. Did they have another one on homelessness? I think so, because I remember going through it with the boys. Weird. Yeah. I don't remember that at all. Interesting. Huh. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, next one, Alaska Zoo or Wildlife Conservation Center. We both chose a Wildlife Conservation Center, but you threw a little caveat into the middle of that. Yeah, because what I said is that 
we also have this thing called the reindeer farm. It's up in like the Palmer Butte area. Mm-hmm. And it, that I have not been to yet. So this summer we're going to go. Yeah. And here's the thing that I liked about it. So at the Wildlife Conservation Center, they have some additional tours you can pay for. Like you can pay to like feed moose, which we've done. Mm-hmm. You can pay to have an encounter with reindeer, which we've done. Um, at the Wildlife Conservation Center, or I'm sorry, at the reindeer farm, you get to do all of those things included in the price. Oh, yeah. Like they let you into a pen of reindeer and there's like 20 reindeer and they're literally just all around you. <laughs> um, you can kiss a moose. Oh, no, thank you. Sherry. No. Maybe. Um, and so <laughs> I just feel like the reindeer farm, it's not as developed or as like maybe professional as the zoo or the wildlife conservation center. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the experience is so much more kind of hands-on and close up with the animals. Interesting. Um, yeah. So I'm excited. I'd like to go. Yeah. yeah. I think this summer we need to cross that off. I agree. Okay. Next one, fishing or hunting. Yeah. We, this one is hard cause we don't do either of these. We don't do, I have been fishing, um, in the, in Indiana and in Michigan, but also here. We have a word. For the kind of fish you guys catch in Indiana and Michigan. You know what we call it here in Alaska? <laughs> bait. <laughs> That's what the kind of fish you guys catch in the Midwest, we call bait in Alaska. Well, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have been fishing. I don't enjoy it. Um, but <laughs> I do have. So I answered this. Um, last night we were kind of talking through these questions. And I told Adam... And he laughed really hard yep. at this. Um, I told him that I, uh, and I don't know, I don't remember how I phrased it, but I, I, there's something about fishing, like there's something about fish themselves that seem less murdery. This is so funny to me. To kill them? I don't, I don't know. Um, and I, <laughs> I don't understand. I understand they're all living beings, whether it's a fish or a moose or whatever, um, but there's just something I have no desire whatsoever to actually shoot a deer or a moose or a bear or whatever. Um, I have no problem. I, it's the grossness of it. I just don't, I don't like the slimies, um, or the blood, but I have no problem just like hooking a fish and killing it. Yeah. So, and I don't know why, I don't know why <laughs> my brain works like that, but but fishing to me just seems so much less murdery than hunting. No, it's so true though. I know. Well, and it's it's just weird, but I I enjoy both. Um, eating eating both. Yep. <laughs> um, I love me some good meat. Mm-hmm. I love me some good fish. I will. I don't like salmon, but I will eat any kind of white fish. I will eat any kind of shellfish. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what about fishing just seems less murdery, but well, it does. It, it does is that, to me. Is that weird to me? No. Okay. No, you're exactly right. Okay. What, when you said that, I started thinking about it, <laughs> and I started thinking about like when I've gone fishing because I mean I've gone fishing a few times. You know, it's like you catch a fish, you bring it into the boat, or you bring it up to the riverbank, and you normally have like this club with you or a rock, and you beat it in the head until it dies. And I was just like, if I did that to a deer, like. You'd be like the most brute. You know I mean, it's like, what happened? It's like you are a horrible human. Why would you do that? Yeah, it's like, oh, I roped the deer and then beat it with a stick till it died. It's like you, you'd be arrested for animal cruelty. Right. And, and but like just shooting a deer, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. But I have. There's just something about pulling that trigger on a deer or any like mammal. I just, I can't do it. I, I Ugh. will say before, I do before I die. I would like to go hunting. I would like to have that experience just because I never have. Mm-hmm. Like, I shot a squirrel once at a camp. I don't think it counts. <laughs> but, but I don't I, think it counts. But I, I, mean, well, it counted, I have also shot squirrels with BB guns. I will say, it, it counted for the squirrel. To the squirrel, it counted well, sure. quite a bit. Sure. To the little squirrel family. It's like, hey, mom, when's dad coming home? <laughs> oh, not feel terrible. Oh I feel horrible. Wow. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Next question was turning an arm or resurrection bay yeah. to just iconic alaska locations that are both both stunningly beautiful yep i chose turning an arm because of proximity we can be there in 15 minutes yeah and i no matter how many times in fact so as you guys are listening well as we're recording this on thursday night Mm -hmm. i'm getting ready to go tomorrow down turning an arm um, on a snow machine trip and mm-hmm. you'll see that on the vlog i can't wait to share it with you guys <laughs> um but even though i've driven turning an arm I, hundreds of times yeah i am so excited because the weather tomorrow is supposed to be sunny 
and beautiful. And I, I never get tired of that view. Yeah, it's so pretty all the time. And the inlet does different things every time we drive down it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like glass and completely smooth. And the, the reflection of the mountains in it is like literally like a mirror. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And then sometimes like the tide is coming in. So you can see that tide just rolling. Amazing. Um, there's times that it's really windy and it's really rough seas and it's like the waves are going crazy. So it's just, it's different every time and it's just so pretty yep. all I, the time. Well, and that's the thing is like different, different weather patterns, times of the year. It has such a different like aesthetic. Mm-hmm. There are times that it's like gray and foggy and misty and it is just like such a mood. It's such a mood, but it's still stunning. Yeah. And in the yeah. fall when the colors are turning and the mountains are covered in gold, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. And so I just love that different times of the year, different days of the week give you a, such a different experience. Yep. Love it. Love it. Next love question. It. Uh, reindeer hot dogs or Talkeena spinach bread. Um, you chose reindeer hot dogs. I did choose reindeer hot dogs. Um, I do love the spinach bread, um, but I just really like those hot dogs. So one of the, one of the things that Sherry and I do, a bit of a tradition of ours, I'm not sure if we've talked about this actually, Mm -hmm. um, the way that we celebrate the fact that it is officially summer (laughs) is we will go downtown, Mm -hmm. order a reindeer hot dog, sit outside right on 4th Avenue in Anchorage. And just have lunch. Yep. Like, if it falls on a weekend, that's great. If not, I take a lunch break from work, which I rarely do. Yep. And I will. I work downtown. So I will meet him downtown and we go and get reindeer hot dogs. It's kind of the kickoff to summer. That's when you know that summer is here. Yep. When the hot dog vendors start to bring their carts out. And it's warm enough to sit right outside oh, and eat. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's so good. But also, like for me... Talking to spinach bread. I have, I have so many good memories of spinach bread. I think mm-hmm. I think the one that I'm thinking of right now that was my favorite um, was this last year. And you weren't able to go with us when the Zachmans were here yeah. to Talkeetna. But took them to spinach bread. And we got, this, we got these tables and these chairs right on the deck of a neighboring business. And we just like sat there and ate spinach bread and like watched people walk by. And we laughed so much. It was just, it was one of those memories where I was just so happy to be with friends Eating my spinach bread. Sure sounds like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, Sherry. You should have been there. You should have been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what do we got next? Summer or winter. So oh. Alaska summer or Alaska winter. I chose summer mm-hmm. because the winter tries to kill me. True. Um, Maybe I, you should ask why. Maybe you should say, winter, well, why are you trying to kill me so much? I know. I mean, I feel like I'm a nice person. Yeah. Um, the cold is really, really terrible for me. And... Um, The ice, like I fall all the time. Yeah. Um, I fall in the snow. It's just, it's not any fun. Like I can't walk in it. I can't be out in it because it's just too cold. I just don't like the winter. I like the winter from inside in a nice warm place. Sounds like a you problem. Well, (laughs) but I will say in the, even in the video, one of the things that you said that you love the most about winter is sitting inside with warm like cup of cocoa and Completely. watching it snow, which Completely. I agree, it's beautiful, but inside, yeah, and <laughs> not out in it. No, and that this is my argument for people who are just like, oh, Alaska's too cold in the winter. Um, my argument for that is the exact same thing when people say, oh, like Florida's too hot in the summer. Here's the thing, you how if you lived in Florida and it was, you know, a billion percent humidity and it was so hot. <laughs> you wouldn't spend the majority of your time outside in it, right? You spend time in environments that are more comfortable. Right. You know what I mean? And so you're inside in an AC. If you visit Florida in the summer, you're in your resort or you're in your pool or you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's the thing is that, yes, are winters in Alaska cold? Absolutely. But most days, like you're outside for minutes. You know what I mean? It's like walking from a heated building to your car it's, it's that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I I love how winter looks. I love the peacefulness of it. I love the stillness of it, the calmness of it. I do too. I it's do a, like that. It's a, winter to me is the most restful season, um, whereas summer to me is like, we just do so much. Right. It, winter is more restful because it's dark all yep. the time and um, there's not anything to do because it's too cold to mm-hmm. be outside. So... It is well, just but, more restful. But here's what I'll say. That's true for you. Like, we know so many people 
who their winter is filled with outdoor activities. Right. They're skiing, they're fat biking, they're cross country skiing, they're downhill, they're snow machining, they're, you know what I mean? Like a lot of Alaskans, winter doesn't slow down their activities at all. (laughs) And so like, that's just kind of, that's, that's us. Yeah. Like even tomorrow I'm going out snow machining and like the wind chill tomorrow could be 30 below zero. Oof. And (laughs) that's just terrible. (laughs) Like I would lose all of my fingers. But there's gear. And that's the thing is that, like, there's gear to keep you from that. And so that's what I'm excited about about tomorrow is, like, be out in truly extreme cold, snow machining, hopefully, to the face of a glacier, getting to go in, like, ice caves and all that stuff. (laughs) Can't wait. Right in the middle of winter. Right. So cool. So we both said summer, um, but I am definitely more of a winter fan. In fact, I also think that people... um, I think that if you're in Alaska, like, if you love Alaska and you come here in the summer and you've been here on lots of cruises... I think you should plan a winter trip. Like, I think you should plan a time when you can come up here, see the Iditarod, um, see the Northern Lights, stay at, like, Alieska Ski Resort, go skiing if you want. If not, like, sit in your room, watch snowflakes, and drink hot toddies in the ski bar. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a nice weekend. Yeah. All right, what's next? Coffee huts or breweries? Yeah, this one... This one was, I think, easy for both of us. And we had different answers. I chose coffee huts. I said breweries. Yep. Um, um, and I like the coffee huts because they're so accessible. They're everywhere. They're just these little drive through huts and you can get coffee and keep going on your way. Yep. Um, the breweries are, are many as well. Mm-hmm. Not nearly as many. Nope. Yeah. Um, but it, they, it's more of an atmosphere. It's more of a vibe. That's what I like about them is that mm-hmm. it is more of a... It's more of a culture and more of a community, I feel like. Mm-hmm. And so you you go to a brewery and, you know, the coffee huts are drive through. I pass through and get coffee on my way to something else or doing something else. Brewery to me is like, I'm going to go. I'm going to spend time. I'm going to sit. I'm going to chat. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to have a flight of beers. Like it's a, the brewery is an experience in itself. It's a commitment. It is a commitment. Yeah. And I love that. Like, that's that's one of my favorite things about it. Yeah. So then the last question, we pit two iconic Alaska steakhouses against yep. each other. Club Paris or Double Muskie? Club Paris here in downtown Anchorage. Double Muskie in the ski resort town of Girdwood, Alaska. Mm-hmm. Uh, we both went with Double Muskie. Yes. Ne- there, there's not a wrong answer here. No, there is not. Um, they are both phenomenal. They both serve amazing steaks. Um, but... Double musky to me is just more of an experience. Um, Club Paris is really cool. Um, it's it's accessible. It's right here in, in Anchorage. Um, but double musky is like you drive down turning an arm, and it's in like this little tucked away place in Girdwood. And it's this little wood building that does not look like the best restaurant. No, here. it's just, like you pull into the dirt. Um, Dry, uh, uh, parking lot yep. and <laughs> um you like this building is just sort of ramshackle and kind of run down and like you walk into it and you're like is this am i in the right place like is this where i'm going and you yep. walk in and it still looks divey um and it is but it's everything on the menu is amazing it's so good yeah and it's so it's just such an Alaskan thing that that's our best restaurant. Yeah. You know, that it's not <laughs> some like super fancy, super high end, like over the top. Um, and it truly is not just Alaskans love this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of you guys might know like the Food Network's best of program. Mm-hmm. Uh, they called Dove Muskie one of the 10 favorite restaurants in America. Yeah. I mean, like people love this place. Yeah. Uh, there are so many people. It, it's funny because as we travel, you know, we mentioned we're from Alaska and a lot of people when they talk, re- like reminisce about their Alaska trip, they talk about double musky, yeah. the meal of double musky, mm-hmm. um, the pepper steak, the fillets, the jalapeno cheese bread. They're like, oh my gosh, like I could go on and on. Yeah. I haven't had anything that's not amazing there. In fact, here's what I'll, here's how good double musky is. <laughs> um, in this entire this or that tag, we've talked about a lot of food. We've talked about a lot of experiences, a lot of things to do. Mm-hmm. And this this podcast and the video we filmed really got me excited about some things. There is not one thing on this entire list that if I could go do right this minute that I'm craving more than going to Double Muskie. <laughs> yes. Agreed. I want to go Agreed. right now. I want to go right now. So bad. 
Um, oh. Yes, because it's so good. It's. I have the website up in front of me, you guys. <laughs> Danger. Um, Danger. But here's the thing. They also have their own cookbook. Yeah. That would be a fun video thing. Oh, that would be fun. Trying to make some double musky. It's not going to be as good. Of course it's not. <laughs> but we can try, gosh darn it. I know. So, you guys, that was our Alaska This or That tag. Some of the stories behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the things that I, is that I loved as we started even picking these questions. Mm-hmm is that we were sitting in our living room and just, we would talk about our answers and then we just had these stories. Oh, do you remember? (laughs) Remember that time that we, you know, thought we were going to get killed by like whatever was coming at us when we were watching Northern Lights. A bear or a moose or whatever. (laughs) Clanking across the road. Clanking across the road. Um, There's just so many stories. And the reality is like every single thing on this list, we could have told stories about. Yes, we have stories for every one of them. Which I think is so cool. Yeah. Um, and we didn't even get into some of the, there were some questions and some items that we wanted to include. We didn't include anything on this about Alaska King Crab. Nope. We, we had it on the list and then we decided it was too close to one of the other things. And so we removed it, but. One of my favorite Alaska King Crab stories. <laughs> See, this is, I'm going to, yeah. I'm just going to take over the podcast. Do it. Um, is we have a friend. Bonus uh, content. A friend I uh, grew up with who owns a crab boat. Mm-hmm. And there was a day here in this house that we like. We got a knock at our front door mm-hmm. and opened the front door and it was a box of Alaskan King crab fresh from his boat. Right. That he had caught the day before. Uh, a day or two before they offloaded right. it off of his boat. Right. And it's like, oh, there's like legit a box of fresh crab at our door. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh, what's up, Alaska? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Alaska doing Alaska things. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many more stories that we could that we could tell about different topics. But you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed kind of this vlog slash podcast combination. Yeah. Um, Let us know if this hits or if it doesn't. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Because we do want to know if this works. Right. Because we have a few other ideas if it does work. Yep. It's it's nice having a platform where we can go a little more in depth and tell tell some of the stories behind our answers. Yeah. I Um, agree. Without having a really long video. Exactly. I'm really excited for our next trip to Double Muskie. Me too. I oh want, my goodness. What are we doing this weekend? <laughs> I, I, I want the pepper steak so bad. And I want that filet with oh. the sauce. All right, <laughs> friends. We love you guys so very much. Thanks for listening. Um, again, go over to YouTube. Search Leg Life Podcast. Uh, we want to hear from you. Any of these stories that, that you love. Do you have your own stories of any of these things we talked about? Yeah. Let us know in the comments on this video over there on YouTube. Leg Life Podcast. Friends, we love you. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Episode number 50. 50. Done. I know. I was saying we should have made this our 49th because Alaska is the 49th state. uh, And I didn't even think about it. Fail. I'm just going to shut down the podcast now. Yep. All right, guys. Last podcast (laughs) ever because we messed that up. No, we're not. No. All right, friends. We love you. We'll see you next week on the Leg Life Podcast. Bye. Bye.